All right, let's get back to the reason why I have all this tape on me. And this was fun to do. Let me move that where you can see it a little better. To try to do this and get taped up without any help. All right, if you're going to play a melody, which is very simple, we have a five note scale, which is called a pentatonic scale, which you don't need to remember that, but just if you want to know, it's there. It's called a pentatonic scale, five note scale, diatonic is what you play on a keyboard or saxes or that, but then you play a pentat pentatonic scale on anything. So here we go. If you play a song, Now notice I go, I lift up one, two, and three. Let's say I'm gonna to go to three. If I go to the note three, then the first and the second numbers, have, first and second fingers have to be up. I can't go, hear the difference in the sound, it should be. If I wanna play the note four, because it's still down. You can't play a note if it's not down. So that would be one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Then these fingers have to be up. So if you go up to play that note, then all one, two, and three have to be up. I know this is crazy and it's a little foolish and you're probably dying laughing at me, but I'm just trying to impress on people that are just starting, young people, old people, kids, that if you want to play the third note, the first and second numbers, first and second fingers have to be up. If you want to play the fifth note, of course the fifth finger has to be down. And then one, two, three, and four have to be up. So you go. And here again, if you want to play the sixth note, which is a sixth finger down, and never comes off at the moment because I got it laced down. Some people will put leather on it, but this is just for show. One, two, three, four, and five have to be up. And my numbers are coming off. So if you want to go one, three, one and two have to be up. If you want to go one, four, one, two, and three have to be up. Of course, four has to be down because that's the note you're playing. It's one, two, three, four, five, and six. If you want to go one six, or let's go, let's go one three six. Those two are up. So if you play six, here again, all one, two, three, four, and five have to be up. If you play four, one, two, and three have to, to be up. If you play three, one and two have to be up. Um, you can't, well, I say you can't, you might be able to, but nobody does it. If you want to do number two, one and number, if you want to do the second hole, but you've got four and five over, you sound like a teal out on the lake. So those have to be covered. Anything above the number has to be covered. So if you want to go one to two, all those have to be covered, just like one has to be up. If you want to play, we'll pick on three again. If you want to play three, the number three, third finger, four, five, and six have to be covered. One and two have to be up. All right, now all the foolishness, I'll leave the tape on for just for a second. To play a song, that's all there is to it. If you play a four, one, two, and three have to be up. Play a five, one, two, three, and four have to be up. All right, now to play a song, you have to get it out of your head. People say that you have to play from your heart, and I agree with that completely, no argument. I completely agree you gotta play from your heart. You need to, but you can't do that when you're learning the flute. You have to learn the flute good enough to where you know what to do to get the, to where you're not being mechanical, where you can get the scale where you know where if you play a four, one, two, and three have to be up. If you play a six, they all, your fingers except for that one that's tied down, has to be up. Now, once you've done this enough, it takes more than two minutes, more than five minutes, I would think, unless you're, yeah, maybe not. For me, it took a while. I had to fight this just like 
and I had to learn it and be very mechanical. But then after a while, once you get to where it's not in your head to where you have to think about every movement that you do with a flute, then once you start transferring where you don't think about it, then you start transferring it, if I think it's my heart, then you start transferring it to your, whichever side of my heart's on. The camera messes me up. Then once you start getting it out of your head, then transferring it down to where your heart is, then you begin to play. Uh, now one quick note, once you learn a scale and once you do a song, and if you just pop that, pop is like, I think it's called a pop, So, on a pentatonic scale, you can't hit a, a wrong note. Any note that you hit is going to sound good. That's just the way the pentatonic scale works versus the diatonic scale, where you can, some things just don't sound right. All right. Um, once you learn what fingers have to be up and down, any note you hit, as long as you follow those basic rules, if you're going to play a four, one, two, and three has to be up, I know I'm being repetitive, but once you get past that, any note sounds good, and then play a song. Now what some people do, I'll go through this quickly, I'm making the video longer than I expected, some people will look at a horizon or a, uh, a mountain and they'll follow the mountain. Some people will look at a tree and they'll follow the branches of the tree and the ups and downs and try to mimic that in a song, which is good. Some people will follow a bird in flight, you know, go up, come down, go up, come down, go up, come down. And some people follow a bird. Um, anything that you want to do, whether you follow the terrain, a branch, a bird, uh, just get it enough practice where you get it out of your head, move it down where it's in your heart, and then you've got music. Oh, I hope this made sense, and I'm going to get this tape off my finger before my wife sees it. She's already thinks I'm nuts, so, and I probably am. Y'all have a good day.